Welcome to another video from Drop the Lock. Um, I haven't been making many videos this week. I've been a little bit busy. Uh, this is one of the projects I've been busy doing. <clears throat> now, the reason I built this cradle was because, as with uh, you know cooking and things, if you do prep work, you can often make things a lot easier for you. So with locksmithing, it um, yeah prep work is very handy as well. It allows you to glide through the jobs a little bit easier. And I've come up with uh, this system here to be able to actually mark these type of keys. This is uh, Silka LF31R and um, it took a bit of time to make the cradle. The cradle's a lot nicer than my other cradles. Um, I laser cut this, laser cut the shapes. I've got four of them there so I'm not wasting my time just doing one at a time. I'm actually cutting four at a time. So, um, and then I've uh, secured it in and I've plotted it all and basically every time I want to reattach this jig um, I've got my main two screws here which will attach at D7 and I7 so I can get it spot on time and time again the next thing about this cradle is that I did is I can flip it so you can do both sides of the keys and each time you slide it in it's exactly where it should be so I'm just going to quickly um, show you why this is why this is handy I'm going to actually uh, mark some of these keys and then we're going to take it back to the bench and I'm going to show you what I mean by prep and to show you that basically if this is going to make life easier or speedier for the process of making keys uh, to code and things along those lines. So I'm just going to bring up the file now, open and uh, we have this side. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is put the keys in into the jig, so the jig's in, and another thing I need to do is actually center those dots. That little red dot down there, I need to center them. So what you just saw me doing there was just centering that, that dot for the height of the keys. So I did that by pulling that back and then using the key blade height, because that's the height we're actually going to be working with. So I was pushing my key blanks all the way down there, like that. Okay, now I, um, so we're ready to go now and put the marker. Okay, so what just happened just then, I'll take them out of the jig to quickly show you. I'll flip this around because we'll be doing the other side. What we've done there, if you can see it, uh, it's going to be pretty hard to see. I'll bring it up here and try and bring some light onto it. You might be able to see it. Space and depth. Maybe in a better light it'll look better. But I can clearly see, even just looking at it from this angle, I can see one, two, three, four, five clear um, spacings, and I also have my depths. You can see it there. So that just, like the depths aren't hard on this particular key, but the spacings, getting them accurate so that you can produce a nice key each and every time is what we're talking about. Now this is um, engraved, it's slightly engraved. If you give it a buff, you'll barely even notice it. So uh, that's why. That's why I do them with this machine, because um, you can still give the customer that key and they're not going to really see it once you've hit it with a buff. Okay, so they're all in, and now we're going to swap, uh, swap file and do the, the other side.
Okay, so they're all done. Now I'm just going to pull one out just to show you once again. It's a little bit hot actually. Uh, can we see the markings on that? Sorry, it's, I'm, not, I'm not using the right camera to kind of give you the zoom in on it. Okay, to the naked eye it's not a problem seeing. To this camera it is um, quite hard for me to, to show those markings. You can kind of see them there. They're like um, an engrave or a scratch. Uh, if you put it on the right light you have no troubles whatsoever sort of seeing them. To the naked eye I can see it easily a foot away. I can tell um, my spacings. Uh, the depths aren't so important but I can clearly identify where the two cut is. The one cut you don't need, three cuts almost down to the brooch. So it's the two cut and the spacing that all of this is for. Now let's take it to the bench and let's see. Uh, we're going to make keys to four locks with these and we're going to see how long that takes. Okay, so I found a Lauren Fletcher lock to take the LF31R and uh, this one here has the little number on the front, 007, James Bond. So I go over to my chart now and I look up 007 and it's 33311. So there's a couple of ways I can do this now. I could use the file from this side and file it down using the space and depth, if you can see them there. Or I could actually do it on this side and use the clippers. So what I might do, and the spacing is the same on both sides, if you can see. They're exactly lined up. So I'll quickly uh, cut a couple of these cuts. So the first cuts are three. Second cuts are three. Third cuts are three. And the last two are ones, which are almost the key blank height. The flat file, if you can see it there. Make sure my ramps are good. And actually, I might even hit it with this file here. When I, when you go from this side, you can see a lot more. Just taking a bit of those uh, sharp edges off the threes. Okay, and there's our key. As you can see, all the spacing's right. I can even tell what's left there. And we come back to our lock here, and it's working. Now, if you want to get fancy, you can actually uh, remove these marks now. I might even have a wire brush here. I do. Okay, so it's going to give these a bit of a going over with a wire brush. And most of the time, that will actually take uh, a lot of them off. But they're so small you can't even really notice them. The idea of these marks is that you can just hit it with the clipper, um, hit it with the clipper, take it down to size, and then you know smooth off the edges. Or you could just use an impression file, look at it from this side, which is the flat side, sorry, this side, which is flat side, and just keep going at it like this, and you can see where your spacing is. So that, that that's the most important idea of the whole process is to see, see where your spacing is. The depths aren't too hard to gauge, but the spacing can be a little bit more um, harder to gauge. So that's a video on um, engraved keys for space and depth. And uh, do they save time? Well, they do if you've, if, if you've only got a file in your pocket and you're going to quickly go cut a key. It's easier than going back to the van and turning on the Unicode and all the rest. So instead of doing that, you can actually just sit there with a pair of pliers, this, quickly rattle up a key, and you're done. So all you need is uh, a file, clippers, your key blanks, and your chart. So that's, uh, that's what this video is all about. Um, other people do do this as well. I know for some automotive, they, um, they do this exact thing. For, for domestic, not so much. But I thought it'd be interesting to um, to see how much easier it would be compared to actually running back to the car and turning on the key machine. Anyway, thanks for watching.